Hey there, this is MJ coming at you with one more, one final for now, for a while, uh, Captain America Comics uh, review and analysis. This is issue 13. Um, you might hear little people in the background. Those are my uh, Sentinels of Liberty, and uh, I don't know if they can contain themselves. Probably not, but anyway, we'll see what happens. I just, I don't have much to say about this comic, um, except for I liked it, and uh, the, like, the racist... Uh, aspects of it are very nuanced and the like retaliatory nature of it after the bombing of Pearl Harbor is very nuanced and weird and I, I don't really understand so uh, I guess here we go uh, as I always want to do I'm gonna start off with credits uh, so Al Avison is credited as the artist in both of the cap stories here I didn't check on the other stuff uh, Stanley of course is the uh, well, he's not technically credited as the writer, but I'm sure he was the writer. He is still credited as the editor for the entire book. Um, so I would think that means that he did the whole thing. So just like, uh, gosh, I thought issue 12 had something about war bonds in it, but I'm not sure. Uh, however, this is for sure. The, uh, there's a whole thing about remembering Pearl Harbor in this issue. It's in the uh, final message from Cap and Bucky at the end, which by the way, the art on them looks way better than it did last time in their final message. Um, so that's definitely a positive. And uh, on the cover of the book, there is also this uh, Remember Pearl Harbor seal. And I don't know, I wonder if this was on the All Winners and on uh, Human Torch and Namor or Submariner, uh, but I didn't check, but that would be interesting. But anyway, okay, so um, anyway, so it's very clearly a Pearl Harbor uh, edition. And you know that cover uh, has nothing. Ab the the main cover has absolutely nothing to do with the um, with the issue, uh, except for that we're fighting Japan now, apparently. But I mean, again, I pointed this out to my eldest. Look at how animalistic and uh, inhuman this Japanese military dude is. Uh, he's got the clawed fingers. But when they fought the Oriental giants, and there's been other Oriental, like more mystic type guys, they've had long. Uh, fingernails and very you know, like thin wiry fingers and like basically claws and the fangs aren't typical on everybody but it is interesting and I don't remember the social political I, I wasn't there I don't know the social political stuff but like this Chinese uh, princess is drawn attractively I think um, she's definitely fit and like this dude seems like a pretty uh, the, the prince uh, that the Japanese are trying to assassinate seems pretty uh, pretty nice um, and you know he looks like an athletic dude and you know Steve's about his size and you know Steve well you know what he looks like he's Captain America he looks great so I mean they're a similar build and everything but anyway it's just interesting because then you've got like this Japanese guy I'm gonna do a spoiler here he's not really Japanese he's a white guy wearing a, a mask to look Japanese which is why uh, I've entitled my uh, my thumbnails so much yellow face because there's two instances of yellow face or maybe three um, Steve, in order to infiltrate where these guys are, puts on yellow face. He dresses up as the Chinese um, prince here, and you can see uh, he dresses up as the Chinese prince, and he even wears a little Chinese mask that falls off of him when he's fighting the Japanese guy and reveals himself to him. Then in the second story with the lighthouse, uh, the robber guy looks Asian in some of the images, even though he's blonde, and then he's also a dude wearing a mask and disguising himself, so it's kind of weird. A different time. The Sentinels of Liberty are not with me at this time, and uh, I'm here to, to finish up this uh, this Cap comic review. So a couple things. Uh, I listened back um, to, to what I had said earlier, and I still stand by all of it, except I want to clarify. When I say the Oriental Giants or Oriental people, I'm using the language of the day from that Marvel Comics use, that Kirby and Simon used, that Lee used. Um, especially, I believe that Oriental Giants was one of the first issues and uh, that was before Lee was on. I think he came on around, well, he was like in three, so it, it could have been him. Uh, I don't know for sure though, but you know, allegedly Kirby and Simon were the uh, you know, big movers and shakers at first uh, as far as the writing's concerned as well on Cap, so you can pin that one on them. Anyway, um, so I'm saying Oriental because that's what was in the book. I do mean Asian, of course I mean Asian. Uh, you know, ramen is, or <laughs> top ramen is oriental flavored, uh, you know, furniture is oriental, people are not, um, and, uh, I mean, that's, like, how I talk, typically, I don't usually call people oriental, like, oh, and, you know, <laughs> being a fan of tokusatsu, a Japanese, uh, 
you know, piece of media. I understand an anime too. Like I understand there's nuance and that there's, you know, Japanese people, Korean people, Chinese people, all sorts of other people. Um, like Pacific Asian type people are, you know, distinct from, anyway, they're all distinct cultures and whatever and I respect that. Just, I, I'm not very educated on them, which is why uh, I might have sounded a little flippant about the, uh, the Chinese and the Japanese here. But the point is overall, not like the truth of the matter of what they are, because this is all, you know, slightly propagandistic. The point is, how did Lee uh, and the Marvel creatives mostly, I'm going to shoulder, uh, Lee's going to shoulder the blame on this one, if it's bad or not. Uh, how did they regard these Oriental people at the time? Oriental folk <laughs> or uh, Asians? Like, I mean, they use slurs, they use slant eye. Uh, Bucky calls one of them that. Uh, one of the League of the Unicorn people that. Um, Gosh. Oh, and then like a Nippon backstabber or something like that, which like, for those of you who do not know, uh, Nippon is actually the Japanese word for Japan. Um, so anyway, uh, like I'm, I'm, I know, I know a little bit, but I know enough to know stuff like that. Um, but like, I'm no expert at all, so I'm not pretending to be. But anyway, uh, I just find it very interesting that like, there's this way that the Japanese, like they're monstrous. They're very evil, even though this guy's pretending to be Japanese. Like, this this panel right here is hilarious. I'm pretty sure the guy in the green uh, that Cap is going after when his Asian, his Chinese man mask is uh, flying off is... <laughs> man, that's, that's kind of hilarious. Anyway, is uh, the actual leader of the League of Unicorns, and he's an American dude. So, like, an American white dude went and, like, learned Japanese, and I'm assuming he spoke with a Japanese accent, and they were... Uh, like, he possibly even learned Japanese to, anyway, I, I, I can't even get into that, because that's like so, that's like a, such a crazy level of like, twists and turns and logical jumps, that this white guy was pretending to be Japanese, and I think he was convincingly pretending to be Japanese, and the Japanese League of the Unicorn members like, didn't mind, so it's almost like, it's like the opposite of white saviorhood, like, you have this white guy, but I guess it was typical of the day, like Tarzan and, and uh, what was the guy? It wasn't H.G. Wells, it was the other guy. Anyway, um, you had these ideas, Kipling, I think it was, you had these ideas of these, you know, white men going into places and becoming, you know, coming, like, more native than the natives and better than them at, at their own thing. Anyway, which, anyway, I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> it's fine, it doesn't bother me. I just think it's interesting how it brings a nuance. So, like, are the Japanese evil? Well, they bombed Pearl, Pearl Harbor, so they're evil, and we're going to take it to them, we're going to, you know, kill them in moss. But, like, is Cap actually fighting? Like, the henchmen are real Japanese men. Uh, they're authentic, you know. They're, <laughs> you know, Nippon Hanto. Uh, so, like, you know, they're authentically Japanese men that he's coming after. Um, and, uh, by the way, I just said real Japan. <laughs> That's all. Uh, that was not a slur. Um, holy smokes, there's guys on the street. Uh, anyway, uh, he said that um, they're... Uh, anyway, it's just weird, because like they're fighting like real Japanese thugs who are being uh, manipulated and controlled by like a Japanese... Or like a white dude pretending to be Japanese, a white guy in yellow face. Cap's fighting that guy while in yellow face to infiltrate the base, which makes sense to me. But I don't know, it's just... It's weird. It's a weird situation. And like, again, I, I think I had said the, the phrase soft pedal or the word soft pedal, like it's like the hate against Asians or Orientals is soft pedaled and almost like Lee, because he seemed like he was always like a, a I, want, I don't want to say progressive. I want to say like well-rounded, like reasoned guy. It was like, Hey, 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 the Japanese may have bombed us, but the Chinese are our friends and the Chinese are our allies, and the Chinese have been victimized by the Japanese, which is true historically. The Japanese did terrible things in military campaigns uh, to China, um, but like all nations have done evil in war against each other. So I'm not lionizing and uh, you know demonizing anybody in particular. It's just it's the truth. It's the the truth. Anyway, war is a terrible thing, um, which is why you should stop voting for politicians who want endless war. Who do I mean? Both of them. Okay, all of them. All of them want war. And uh, I know it's ironic that I love Captain America and I've been thrilled and excited by all these Captain America comics when he's like pro-war pop propaganda. But the thing is, he's not all about war. And that's that's the weird thing. But anyway, that's, that's a bit of a tangent. So <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Are you wondering, good golly, what are you yelling about? Look, war is the most anti-freedom thing. To me, Captain America, um, to me, this is what he represents. He represents freedom. He represents the strength to exercise freedom. He represents, uh, like justice and true justice is kind of like in this, 
um, treating people as individuals. The Chinese are treated differently from the Japanese. This American man who turns out to be the traitor to America, you know, for Japan or whatever, uh, with the League of Unicorns, he is not covered by the fact that he's a white American man, who's also probably cisgender. Uh, he is taken and judged for his own evil actions. Uh, Steve and Bucky regularly um, do non-war thing. They regularly stop criminals. They regularly solve mysteries, stop, you know, murders. And by criminal, the difference, the distinction between murders, murderers and criminals is murderers are just trying to kill people for revenge or maybe even for a profit motive while criminals are like um, guys just trying to steal stuff. So I should say like, you know, burglars versus, you know, murderers. Anyway, they're typically involved in that kind of stuff and they're always helping the little guy. And like, you know, again, uh, progressive, right? I'm going to bring up progressive. Like, despite the fact that they have a guy named Whitewash Jones, who's black and who's drawn in, like, the minstrel style, who, uh, again, Jack King Kirby created. Um, <laughs> sorry. I just, I have nothing against Jack Kirby. I just love, um, all the hate that Stanley. it's just ironic with all the hate that Stanley gets. Um, I like to just point out the fact that everybody was a little racist at the time. So, Whitewash Jones is, uh, a member of the Kid Gang, um, which, uh, I cannot remember the kid book specifically, but back a few uh, Cap comics ago, I think it was issue nine, uh, they fought the Black Talon. The Black Talon um, goes on to be a, a, a villain that uh, Cap and the other Sentinels, or no, Bucky and the little uh, Sentinels of Liberty Club um, end up fighting in their own little spinoff comic. And I, I don't know how long it ran. I'm being diminutive because it's like for kids, but that's, you know, it's just <laughs> branching off and going to the market. That's smart. Um, anyway, uh, and they have a, a black kid in there. They have a fat kid, fight, fat white kid that looks like there might be a Jewish kid because I think I see a, a yarmulke or a kippah or a skull cap, as some of you may call it. Anyway, um, so, and there's even a girl in their first appearance in, in the classroom. Uh, they're all hanging out together, though. But, like, he's he's drawn very, you know, traditionally, like, minstrel show. Uh, he looks like he's in blackface, like that old, you know, racist depiction of black people. Anyway, um, and again, that was your King Kirby. Uh, so, like, even in there, like, Cap and Bucky are friends with this black kid, and it doesn't matter that it's, you know, was Jim Crow still going on in the early, I, I don't know the whole history of it. Um, I know Jim Crow was, like, a government-mandated policy, uh, and, you know, that's my biggest problem, is that it was codified into law. Um, you know, socially, people can be jerks, but you don't have to associate with it. Anyway, I, I'm getting off into a whole big tangent, but, like, to me, Captain America stands for the opportunities for freedom and all those things, just like America. I don't hate America. Some people I know, I was having a conversation over the weekend, and they was like, man, I, I wish, like, it's too bad you hate America. And it's like, I don't hate America. I like what America stands for. I like the idea of the freedom and the liberty and all these things. But, like, the fact that we're in a blood-soaked empire, um, you know, really bothers me. And uh, I'm not saying Cap's to blame for that. Um, Woodrow Wilson's to blame for that. Um, FDR entered the Japanese. Big Mr. Uh, Democrat, Republic, or, um, well, they're all the same thing anyway. Um, nationalist is more the problem. Anyway, so, like, while, you know, it's ironic that this came out here, right? And the Japanese are, you know, seen as evil, but the Chinese are seen as good. Um, but, like... We, uh, the, the Chinese as a class, uh, there's a bunch of laws actually that were drafted laws. This is the law of the government doing it that were drafted to, um, ostracize the Chinamen who came over and built the railroads for us, um, or for the United States. I should say I wasn't here at the time. Come on. You can't blame me. None of my ancestors were. We were all, uh, you know, in other places, Senegal, Puerto Rico, Mexico. <laughs> anyway. Um, so like, uh, anyway. Um, it's just, there's constant legal, like the, the more powerful the legal apparatus is, the more nimble it is at oppressing certain people, uh, at the behest of the majority of the people, uh, even a 51% majority, which is why, uh, it's something to be careful about and freedom should be, uh, jealously guarded. And I don't know why I just went on that tangent. Um, I guess I was talking about nuance, uh, and I appreciate the nuance that's used here and how it's not like all Asians as a group should be massacred. Like, that's not what Cap isn't like, I'm going to kill all Japos and, you know, Chinamen too. It's, hey, these Japanese guys right here in the, in the League of Unicorns are bad. And the cover, of course, shows us going, shows Cap, you know, like socking Hitler in the face, socking a Japanese general who, I don't know who that would have been, um, in the face. And, uh, I just think that's interesting, um, that even though there's that direct nationalist thing, there's also this 
uh, other element, this other side of it, like, look, not all Asians are bad. Come on, guys, the Chinese are our friends, which I've said before, so I'll stop belaboring that. I also love that in this issue, we get to see Cap rocking that shield on his back, which is uh, one of my favorite things about Captain America. You know, we see the depiction of it in the movies, and I guess that's where, like, it's... I mean, it's in motion. So you see him throw the shield and then slap it onto his back. That's super cool. I never understood how it is accomplished in the movies. You can see here that Cap has like a strap around his chest, um, his broad, muscular <laughs> chest. And uh, like, that's that's a neat idea. That's super simple. But like, was it because he was going to be disguised? Uh, I kind of think so. Because this is um, poison on the beam of the ceiling. Yeah. So this was Cap in disguise. There was a, a fight. I think he like turned out the lights and then he jumped up to the top. Yeah, he breaks the lantern and then he jumps up to the top. So while he's uh, disguised as um, as the prince, the Chinese prince, uh, he has the shield on his back. It's covered up by the robe. And then he's wearing it there. You know, he keeps it on, obviously. And then he even drives... Um, Let's see. Yeah. So then uh, from there, they leave. They leave. He's up on the rafters and then he follows after them in a car uh, and he still has the shield on his back. And it's funny how like the shield sometimes flat. Sometimes it's, you know, more beveled, more rounded uh, or more pitched, whatever. It's kind of interesting. Anyway. Um, and then there was another instance in the other story where he actually had the shield on his back and he was like diving into the water. And that was a really cool uh, image very dynamic so I just I really enjoy um, the aspect or not the aspect but like the um, I really enjoy how excuse me uh, the shield like the language the visual language of Captain America has changed over these 13 issues like at first he wasn't throwing a sh at first it was a pointed shield then it got changed to a round shield then he threw that round shield then he threw that round shield and it ricocheted I don't know that he's thrown it, it's ricocheted, and he's caught it yet. I don't know that we've gotten to that point. And that's kind of interesting, though, because that's like, that's Cap to me, you know? That's what I know. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's he's wearing it on his back now. So, like, I want to see him, like, <laughs> I want to see it an issue. And I, I'm not going to keep going with Cap. Like I said, this is my last one for a long time until we get into the 60s, uh, and he's an, an Avenger or whatever. Um, probably. That's probably the case. Anyway, I want to see him running into some place, grab it off of his back, throw it at somebody, it ricochets, hits a few people, hits a wall, comes back to him, he puts it in his hand, and then puts it on his back. That'd be super awesome to see. Um, yeah, that'd be super awesome. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, I really enjoyed this. I think it's a really interesting thing to talk about. There's, you know, ugly things in it that are there to talk about, but I think it's a good conversation to have. And, like, we should... Uh, it's healthy that like all this stuff was allowed to be in here so that it can be discussed and, and dealt with. Um, and I'm definitely thankful that it's there and that it's been preserved and that I got to enjoy it. And I hope, uh, that I shared, that I shared it with some of you and that you got to enjoy it as well. Um, I really think that's all I have to say for now. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to remind you that not only am I a podcaster, but I'm an artist and a writer. I have Art up on, well, from Toku Timber, which you may not care about if you're just into comics, but Tokusatsu's Japanese live action stuff. It's basically superhero y things, but um, it's like a slightly different uh, ethos and, and uh, aspect to it. It's all live action for the most part, even though some Tokusatsu stuff has been turned into manga, uh, which is Japanese comics, and then eventually anime, which I hope you know what that is. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, there's that, and then there's writing projects over there. I actually have a Tokusatsu inspired comic book idea so like Ultraman the rise of Ultraman but it's different it's unique um there are three principal characters in it I mean one she's like the the anchor but the other two are very important they form a little team um so like I have that and I have some children's books that I'm writing one of them is actually uh, about superheroes it's like an anthology capturing all these superheroes that I created into one book um that I'm querying I'm working on getting that done so anyway point is uh, you can go to mgmunos.com slash stc to find the whole list uh chronological list of all the uh reviews that i've done for swinging through comics and i'm gonna try very hard every time i do a new one to post that one at the very top of the page so if you just want that you can get it right away um and then there will be like there will be the thumbnail and then under that will be a link uh that opens you up to the show notes for that actual page and the post where the audio lives and there's even a link to the video there uh and then you know down the list on that you know stc page um there will be all of them in chronological order and with just the like the episode title and number listed or or it'll be stc you know one through what are we at 47 48 um so anyway, that's all there for you to check out. So please go ahead and do that. You can also check out mgmunos.com slash support to see the different ways you can support me and help me uh, to grow and, and to fund uh, projects going forward. Um, 
because I have a lot. Like I said, I'm, you know, I have a script for a comic book. I'd like to hire an artist and uh, maybe launch an Indiegogo or no, I'd like to hire an artist and launch an Indiegogo and then have a successful, uh, you know, um, campaign to get this book going. Uh, there's action. Uh, it's cool. Like I, I can't talk about it. It's like a sci-fi action thing. Um, it's tokusatsu based. So I, it's a little hard to explain, but like basically there's, um, like a transforming, uh, like a little transformer, like a person that turns into a monster cyborg type of thing. And this girl fights it off with the help of a uh, living tree and a robot wolf, basically. I mean, if that sounds cool to you, I'm just, I, I gotta think of a way to, I gotta come up with a query for that specific comic book and then uh, see about launching it into something bigger. Um, cause I wrote basically like the origin story of how those three meet, um, the, uh, soldier girl, the wolf guy and the living tree. Um, but I need to, uh, flesh it out and maybe package it, not as a single floppy, but like as a whole, like, you know, 50 or, I don't know, 80 page or whatever, you know, big graphic novel thing. Like that, that seems to be the thing. Um, and I probably have enough stories that I could write with them to, uh, to get that all together and have it be like, like, this is the origin. Like, this is where they meet. Maybe do some flashbacks and other individual stories. And then like, this is like a whole, you know, mission or two that they go on together. That could be cool. Anyway, I don't know, but I'm thinking out loud. Um, but I want to direct you always back to mgwinners.com. There's a podcasts link up in the menu. Uh, you can, <clears throat> click on podcast, and then you can find Swing Through Comics or um, any of my other um, stuff. I talk about Star Wars. I'm going to be talking about Mandalorian soon, actually, after this uh, goes out. Uh, Swing Through Comics, um, the, well, the channel, the YouTube channel for Swing Through Comics is going to be all Mando <laughs> for a while. Um, and then uh, the audio feed, if you want to follow up on the Mando stuff, isn't going to be Swing Through Comics. It's actually going to be F-O for fully operational, so you can find that over there. It's my fully operational Star Wars analysis. So, anyway, that's pretty much it. I'm working on comics. Um, I have children's books that I'm trying to get picked up by traditional publishers, and uh, I've created, I did all the character designs myself, so you could at least, you know, like, see those tagged to the posts about them. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to ask you to find, or what is it? <laughs> what did I say? Something about, uh, basically... You should find the strength. I'm going to ask that may you find the strength to be the hero you needed in your most desperate hour. And with that, I'm signing off. Goodbye, folks. Take care.